welcome back to the garage. As you can see which car we have in today, we've got a little quick, easy thing that we're going to do that a lot of people do to a lot of different cars. This is not Mazda specific, let alone Protege specific. This is just, in general, a little car mod. It's not going to make it faster unless you believe in sticker powers, but should add a nice little cosmetic touch. Um, you might have seen me do some other similar things to the Toyota, which is on the other side of the garage door. And other than that, I don't think I've actually filmed a video like this before. However, this is what we're going to be doing. They are upside down, and as you can see, we are weighted with other uh, soon-to-be-installed car parts for a different project that I will not film because it doesn't matter. We've got some stripes, and we're going to add a little bit of a uh, fender stripe. So the first thing we're going to have to do, obviously, is we're going to wash this real good. I'm going to use some Dawn dish soap and scrub it with my little sponge. Make sure we're nice and clean. We don't want grease. We don't want any of the road grime that's been put on this poor beaten little car, as you can see. It's very, very dirty. It's been uh, not enjoying the daily driving. But we're going to wash this real clean, real good. And uh, we're going to get some painter's tape. Ugh. Rest in peace, my paint. We're going to get some painter's tape, and we're going to get this measured out and lined up. And uh, we're going to put on some Go Fast stripes. Just two little hash marks on each side. Should be sufficient to uh, increase our autocrossing ability. And uh, that's going to be the extent of this video. So let me go get a bucket of some water, some Dawn dish soap, and we're going to get to uh, house cleaning. There is soap in this. And this rag is clean. It's just stained. Okay, now that the fender is washed, I'm going to make sure it dries. I'm going to get another totally dry chamois. I'm going to go over it one more time, then we're going to tape and get ready to apply the decal. Okay, so I kind of basically I just set it on here and roughed it how I kind of want it to be on. And then I measured my distance here, first my distance here, so I can line it up the same over there. And I just have, as you can see, taped it on roughly to hold it. I'm gonna put a little bit more on it. And then we're just gonna trim off the excess across here and there so when we peel it and it sticks on we don't have to trim it then my tape is just not holding out like it should be no bother so we're going to trim this i'm going to tape this a little bit better so it doesn't move and we're actually going to peel and stick the top first and once that's done we'll do the bottom so let me trim this and get this taped on better so there we have it I have it trimmed where it needs to be. We're taped on, quite a bit more solid. And what we are gonna do first is very carefully lay this back. We're gonna peel the back off and cut the backing off. And we're going to stick the top to the fender and work the air bubbles out. And once that's done, we'll do the same to the bottom. And we'll just roll the bottom lip here up underneath the fender so it stays I meant to turn that on before I did that I apologize so desperately I'll try to remember to do it over there literally just pulled it back trim that off and
Okay, now that that's done. This off. Do the exact inverse here. Trying to put too much water on, like I have a bad tendency to do. And don't drop your squeegee. Now I'm probably wrong in saying this, but in all the experience I have with doing vinyl, the paper backing is far less flexible than the actual vinyl. So before I roll this under, I'll try to make that out, I'm actually gonna pull the top backing off and I can check for air bubbles a little bit easier than that and I'll make it easier to uh, roll this, I'm hoping. So, without further ado, I see air bubbles already. So, we have to just work out our air bubbles as best we can. You're much better at this than me, which it's not setting the bar too high. You can probably not have any of them in it at all. I am not very good at this. Shooting water out of there like a problem right. Usually easiest for me to see where the bubbles are. If I can reflect some light off of it is what I'm doing now. Ugh, that's just positively gruesome. I can already hear myself being corrected in the comments. Please be gentle. I'm fully aware of how not good I am at this. Oh, it just gets So this is basically going to be the uh, fun part, is trying to chase out all the bubbles. It's best to work with it as long as it takes to get it done, but I won't bore everybody with watching me fumble around trying to get them out here prep is everything the better you can do at getting them out as fast as possible and keeping them from getting in there in the first place the better off you will be I'll come back when I either gotten them all out or gotten bored and the latter is the greatest possibility. In the finished product for the driver's side, overall pretty happy with it, turned out okay. Uh, I'm by no means a professional and if your audio and visual equipment is better than mine you can probably see that I do have a couple of little uh, not perfect ones. 
I do put the heat gun on them when I'm done just to uh, dry out whatever water might be under there so I can see better of uh, what water and air is still underneath the vinyl. Uh, there's not a whole lot. Honestly, uh, I wouldn't do this if it was on a show car or if it was on a high-end car, but uh, the application of the vinyl is better than the rest of the paintwork on this car because it's just been on the road for 167,000 miles and beating around autocross tracks and daily driven. As you can see from the state of my wheels that are slowly chipping away. I am anticipating a few of the bubbles still left. Uh, very slight. I don't know if you can actually see them. Should be able to. Uh, I'm anticipating some of those will actually go away with heat and time. They tend to dissipate uh, a little bit, but uh, overall, I think it's fine. Uh, it's not going to bother me. It does what I want it to do. Uh, they look as good as I was wanting to, and more importantly, the color matches the rest of the car the way I was wanting it to. So we're going to let that one go. I might work on it a little bit more and try to get a couple more bubbles out, but overall, it uh, ended up pretty good so we're just going to go over to the other side and start to repeat the process and this time I promise I will show folding this back and cutting the backing off and then sticking it and rolling out the air bubbles so I won't have to be cutting that away again. So just like we do on the other side we're just going to wash the side of the car. And the reason for Dawn, in case anybody was curious, even though I know I sound like an idiot to most other people, Dawn will cut grease, wax, etc. So if you wax your car a lot, it'll cut most of that off and the vinyl will stick better. One of the main reasons why I'm doing this now is because winter is coming on. In fact, it's about 30 degrees colder outside today than it was two days ago. And I won't be waxing it as much over the winter. I never do because I'm an awful car person. And I don't treat my cars the way I should. So I figured why not do this? We'll get one more good wax in for the year. And uh, hopefully car mods for the rest of the year will remain to tires, maybe brakes, maybe a big brake kit. Maybe some interior stuff on the other car. Not sure yet. Finances aren't where they need to be for big car modifications. God knows I'd love to be ordering a supercharger right about now for that car outside and work on installing it over the winter. However, finances being what they are, Personal life being what it is, red breast whiskey costing as much as it does. Money's just not there for any kind of big, big modifications for the cars. I'm sure I'll think of something though. Maybe something as silly as installing a strut tower brace on the other car might get around to that. Anyway, I digress. Now that we've got this fender nice and clean, nice and clean. I'm going to go get the uh, vinyl, 
And we're going to tape it on, measure it the same as we did. And we will cut back to the vinyl taped on here, ready to peel it back. Now that we've got it measured, and I've got it taped on just where it needs to be, same exact measurements from the other side over there, three inches from the corner of the fender and bumper to the actual stripe, and 12 and a half inches from the tip of the fender to where it's going to be. We are going to trim our remainder, just like we did on the other side. We're going to trim it so we don't have too much extra hanging over. I know I forgot to say that in the previous scene. But uh, we're going to trim it here, and I need to trim it here. And then we'll peel it back and stick it. <laughs> here we go. So, trimmed our excess. So, I'm going to lean this back not peel our tape off. We don't have to go far. Turn to spray instead of stream. We just want a little bit of water. Don't be like me and overdo every single thing in your life. I'm going to peel back. Don't touch the vinyl. If you have even better vinyl than me, this is cheap eBay vinyl. It'll probably work a whole lot better than mine even does. I'll do a how-to on how to cut like that later. So, squeegee. Now before we get carried away, let's do the bottom. Keep our squeegee clean and the little joggers. Hashtag Nike, hashtag sponsor me, hashtag broke. Peel this off. Like so. Not going as planned. Don't touch the vinyl. And we're just going to start peeling this off and make sure it's all good. Now that I have worked out most of the air bubbles, just like I did on the other side, I'm going to put just a little bit of heat to it. Dry it out a little bit, let it stretch, and see what, uh, what rears its ugly head. There's a your mom joke in there somewhere, but... You use the heat gun, try not to put it too directly on it. You don't want to burn the paint or scorch the vinyl. And heat gun gets pretty dang hot, even on low. You can already see some more bubbles I can work out. Like I said on the other side, a lot of you are probably a heck of a lot better than this than I am. However, some of these bubbles will dry out, they'll end out in their own time. Especially if you have a better vinyl than I do that's a little bit more breathable and it'll let the air out on its own a little better. <laughs> Hindsight's 2020. Could have bought a higher quality vinyl. 
the more reputable source than Cheap Bay, but like I said, for a 15-year-old daily driver that's been beaten on badly, this one has. This will suffice for my needs. Especially if I get this air bubble out right here. That's pretty much all there is to this. Prep tends to be like any other cosmetic thing. The secret to your success. The better prep you have as far as a clean surface, have all of your tools nearby so you don't have a sticker dangling there while you're fetching your scissors or water bottle or crown. You don't you don't risk getting dirt or some foreign body, such as a fly, if you're doing this in the warm weather or down south where you have bugs out past October. Makes all the difference in the world doing these sort of things without having carcasses chilling out underneath your newly applied vinyl. And if I were you, the 30 of you that might actually watch this. Be sure to take care of the ends of the vinyl. Inside the fender, under the fender, wherever the vinyl ends. Because 99% of the time, that's what you'll forget. Especially in the case where I am right now. So under the hood, you don't see it very often, so you're not going to put as much attention to getting the bubbles out. This will be the first place the vinyl starts to peel back up. So you want to make sure that you have good adhesion to the body and sole of wherever it is you happen to be sticking your, your vinyl. You want to be careful to make sure you have your air bubbles out of the bend. And I can see I have one chilling out here on the top. You want to make sure that the creases and the bends are sticking very well. Like I said, be very diligent with your squeegeeing toward the ends where the vinyl stops so you can make sure it doesn't peel back up. To reward yourself for a job well done, go and grab yourself a Bud Light Lime or if you're one of those people, your pumpkin blue moons. It is in fact October. Sit down, watch some uh, Grand Tour, and order your Halloween costume. One last thing before I forget. If you recall, and if you did as I did and washed your car with Dawn dish soap, you have stripped off all waxy surfaces and all of that good reflective stuff that saved your paint. So before you go on a 3,000 mile trip or you start daily driving it again, be sure you wash the area with which you washed with soap and get wax back on it. Save your paint. For the love of everything sacred, save your paint. And as soon as you get done with all of that, go to your local Cars and Coffee, Cars and Waffles, Cars and Beer, whatever it is that you're up to, and tell your friends that you just gained 45 horsepower. 58.
<laughs> Behind me, you'll see a car.